what I'm doing every day is I'm waking up and I'm just paying attention to my train of thought, my recollection, my memory. I'm letting my mind wander. I'm looking, I'm reading, I read the newspaper every day. Uh, I look at Twitter every day. I look at Instagram every day. And I'm, and I'm waiting and I'm hoping for, for one of these media encounters to um, set off a kind of train of thought where I can then like frantically search the internet for an image that will hit me everywhere where I want to be hit. I like it when images like inspire things within me all at the same time, like fear, anticipation, desire, regret, exhilaration, uh, terror, love, um, like big romantic subjects. Like I want all of that like held within one picture. So I'm on Google all the time. I'm, that's, I, and, and, and I'm looking through magazines and stuff, and I'm looking, uh, you know, on the, uh, elsewhere on the internet. But I want to be greeted. I want to be met. I want to be visited by some kind of image or picture that is better than what my life is. Most often I'm painting portraits that are portraits of well-known people from recent or kind of dis middle distant past popular culture. And I do think of these people as characters that I then bring into a narrative that I'm kind of cobbling together and building out of appropriated material that I, for whatever mood that I'm in, think that these people match the mood that I'm trying, the mood that I'm living through, the mood that I'm experiencing um, now. At this given point in time, I have to make work now, so I have to know what my mood is now, and I have to find these icons and pull the different characters from out of this like pop universe and see which one of these characters I need to like pray to right now, or which ones I want to think about right now. This is oh, it's kind of similar to the way like Roman Catholics like have a saint. There's specific saints for specific like ailments or problems in your life or things. There's a certain saint that you need to pray to in order to like uh, protect your pets or like protect your boat or protect your business or whatever. Whatever. Find your lost keys, you know. So like Catholics have been doing this for centuries and it's fine. So like I kind of think of like all of these characters that I'm pulling out of the wind, like out of the the Google image search, like I'm. I'm thinking of like, this is a figure that I need to think about right now because it matches exactly the kind of mood that I'm living through. Um, so that's kind of like the in general story of what it's like for me to like really invest in somebody's image that way. When I was five years old, my parents took me to see The Little Mermaid, the Disney movie in the theater and it blew my brains out. It, was, uh, it blew me away. I mean, I was young, very impressionable. And that movie was made for somebody like me at that time, that age. Um, but it was just like the whole experience of sitting in a dark room and having um, a kind of uh, audio and visual experience projected onto the screen in front of you and you're just subjected to it. It was like I knew that art was better than life. And I knew that color, light, sound, line, composition, narrative, drama, romance, all these things were meant to be viewed flat on a wall and they can happen to you and that is nicer than probably most things that you would experience on a day-to-day -day basis. I grew up in suburban Connecticut, near Hartford, Connecticut. Um, my dad is the pastor of a church, an evangelical church in Connecticut. So I grew up with a lot of religious instruction, uh, going to church a lot and going to youth groups and stuff a lot, um, Sunday school, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I went to public school in my town, small town, Connecticut. Um, and so it was, it was 
I thought it was normal. I think it still, I think it still kind of was. But there was like this big, there, I mean, there was already in my house like a lot of heightened emotional reactions to things because there was a lot of religious fervor, right, all the time. Um, I think that made me kind of intense. But also made me pay attention to things like symbolism, iconography, um, uh, narrative religion, you know, like things like that, like th things like an afterlife, things like there being like eternity. Um, I still kind of like operate like as if this is like there is a heavenly reality and a hellish reality at the same time that, that there is this um, like kind of a terrestrial earthly reality. Um, so I'm already operating on several different planes all the time in my mind, and this is just normal to me. Um, and pictures operate in this, like all pictures, I think, I think all pictures are religious. All pictures are capable of inspiring some kind of devotional uh, response. So I, I mean, I just do that normally as a cause of maybe how I was raised. At the same time that there is this kind of like intense religious instruction and, and a kind of an, an inherited uh, religious or an inherited belief system that was given to me by my family um, with all good intentions. Um, you know, at, this, at the same time I was, you know, watching cartoons, I was watching Disney movies, I was watching TV, eventually I started watching all kinds of MTV or VH1 music videos. And then when the internet came, forget it. I was just looking at pictures all the time, drawing constantly when I was a kid. When I started realizing that the two impulses toward um, worshiping some kind of God in heaven was, a, was very similar to kind of like worshiping a kind of like pop idol. When, when those things started to collapse into one another, I just really became more and more myself. You know, and I realized that that all of these things are real to me, and this is just this is who I am. This is my life now. Like I come here every day, and I because I've looked at too many pictures, and I have to make more. I have to respond in kind. You know, so for me, painting Prince was not only like this commemorative effort that I wanted to engage with this kind of worldwide grief. Of, of his passing, um, but it also for me, in my studio, it was an opportunity for me to join a kind of lineage of like royal court painting or this kind of like Baroque or Rococo kind of art history or that kind of almost like altarpiece church, like an altarpiece in a church, like that kind of moment. So I just. I went for I went for the goods. I went for the 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 uh, Purple Rain album cover. I mean that's that's so iconic. It's so recognizable. It's it's a world famous album cover. Even in the photograph, even in the original image that he made, there's it has this kind of rococo airiness about it already. Like there's this cloudiness and this smokiness and there's and it's infused with like kind of like pinks and oranges and obviously purple and like this kind of midnight blue like kind of throughout the entire thing and he is just perched seated there on his motorcycle like a chariot you know like a horse um, it was already art it was already um, baroque you know um, so all I had to do was know that and then render it in oil paint on a massive scale so that it would be this impressive kind of, if not um, divine or religious encounter for a gallery visitor, then at least some kind of like royal encounter. Prince was so massively influential and massively important and um, you know, innovative. He was the, as large as that. His name was fucking Prince. Like, it, he already was royalty. Like, there needed to be a royal court portrait of Prince. It needed to be there. I want my paintings to be as perfect at what they are as what Henri Fantin Latour's Floral Still Lives, as perfect as those are, I want to be that perfect.
he stands out to me as a key figure, as someone who I identify with or that I relate to from like the art historical story from that canon. Um, I, I identify with that work, I think because uh, it's hard to understand him. I think it is hard to understand. The, the, the floral still life paintings, they are sublimely, perfectly made paintings. That is perfect art. Um, and that's not always a compliment, you know? He probably resented, he may have even resented these floral still lifes because they were so successful. They were so easy to sell because they are perfect and they're very appealing. Um, but the, I think they mask like a much more like stranger, probably a stranger like inner life or imagination that was much more romantic, much more involved in like classical mythology and things like that. Like I, 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 he made all these kinds of pictures that never went so far because they were just like these wild like fantasy pictures that he was making on the side. I started copying that work kind of seriously and periodically. I, I make, well, I'll make several at a time. And what started as kind of like a, a studio um, exercise, just as a way to kind of self-educate or invest in that work with my own body, with my hands, with my own vision, with my eye, um, as just a way to like become intimate as possible with, that, with, that, with his work. Um, it then just became my work because I was making it, and I realized, and it, it was like a nice counterpoint, and it gave a nice, like, quiet note, a kind of rest to stop, a rest note for all the really intense and frenetic and like much more up to date and much more recent material that I've been pulling from from the popular media. Um, I don't know what it is, but I find him so compelling. There's some mystery to it. There's some quiet. The perfection is mysterious and it is quiet and it is understated. Even while being so quiet, a good Henri Fantin Latour painting can totally overwhelm you. And it's this big. And um, I don't know how he does that. <laughs> I want to know how he does that. That's why, that's why I'm looking at it constantly. That's why I'm trying to copy it in my studio and stuff like that. And this one self-portrait I made from in 2009, it had the Henri Fantin Latour flower. I kind of like perched it behind my ear. I had copied it from the New Order album cover. Um, this painting, this self-portrait, it was a way for me to try to become intimate with Fantin Latour's work, like placing it literally like next to my head and also just like using it as a style point to become more elegant um, and to make the painting more elegant um, while also being a, like a reference like that sometimes can be kind of like it can be a nod but I, I want I like references as an as a as a as a, kind of, as a point of intrigue like as a kind of like way to become somehow closer or maybe more hopefully more intimate with the thing that you are addressing or sending invitation to. I think really good art is so entertaining that it's better than life. And life right now, especially now, is there's a lot to be improved upon, right? Um, good art is better than life. We want it to be better than life. We want art so good and so entertaining and so elegant and so chic that um, we can somehow adopt a part of that into the way we live life, the way, the way that we style ourselves, the way that we approach other people, the way that we approach like concepts of living. Um, so good art being, I want my work to be better than life and I want, and right now life is so kind of like dire and stressful and a little bit like anxiety ridden that the really good art does have to be really good. Because it, you know, I think everyone, all of us need a kind of a boost, you know, to sort of like uh, feel like the future can look better and be better and feel nicer, you know. So lately in the studio, I and in, within the work and within the pictures that I've been making, and 
I've been trying to understand that anxiety and represent that anxiety or evoke that anxiety and then, and, and, and then hopefully counteract that kind of darkness with something that represent a counterculture. And I don't know where that counterculture is exactly right now, where they are on the ground, but I'm trying to find pictures that like at least suggest that we'll have one. Because I work all the time and because I work kind of fast, like a lot of these pictures accumulate and they're here in the studio and there's a lot of them all at once. And I do that by design um, because I like, to set up, uh, I like to set up an exhibition scenario where there's a lot for the viewer to sort of consider at once in a kind of rapid su succession. So I'm kind of, I like to think, of, I've, lately I've been thinking about an exhibition like setting it up like a supercut or like a fast montage, like as if it is, it can be like a narrative sequence, like a fast narrative sequence within a music video where you see this image, this image, this image, this image, this image in like, in like 20 seconds, you know? And let's, and then when you're, when you're going to galleries anyway, you're, if you're like, if you're like a kind of average viewer, you're only there for five minutes anyway. I love it when the exhibition, when you go in and it's like that thing, that thing, that thing, that thing, that thing, and the emotional response um, follows that path, but it's all just like really different stuff. Like you can, be, you can be attracted to this picture, afraid of that picture, turned on by that picture, kind of exhilarated by that picture. And then that creates a really rich, narrative, emotional kind of like area. And that's how I'm hoping to like really arrange my work, set up my work like that. And it's, that's MTV. That's all MTV, you know, like video editing. Now when you look at work, there's a lot of art and there's a lot of imagery and there's a lot of media. It comes at you all the time. It's like an onslaught. Um, and it's aggressive, right? So I have to be that aggressive, and I don't mind being that aggressive. Like, the, I want pictures that are intense. I want, pic I want subject matter and big themes that compete for your attention. I want your attention. I'm a jealous lover, you know? I want these paintings. Um, I want you to want them. <laughs> um, it's a lot like advertising, you know? So. I do think that my paintings uh, reveal themselves over time, like any good art will, but at the same time, I want them to greet you, greet to you like immediately. In terms of the kind of pleasure that, that good painting can provide to a viewer, I think that pleasure elucidates understanding. I think that pleasure lubricates understanding um, and new knowledge. Um, I think that when you see a good painting, I think I just get, a, I feel a little bit loosened up. I feel like I can think a little bit faster and I can feel things faster. Um, and that's what I really want. I want to, I want to feel things um, in a big, loud way and I also want to feel them faster. And I want to, f and I want, and I want to be able to handle it, you know. I don't. I like the idea of being overwhelmed by a painting, but personally, I've never been overwhelmed because as soon as I'm getting this close, I just be, I just get, a, I feel like I can handle it, I can take it, and I want it. It's very much like religious zeal, like in a kind of like evangelical sense like being touched by God or something, or like being visited by an angel, or like doing drugs and just having like your mind blasted by some kind of like chemical experience. Um, and I've had both of those experiences. And this is kind of what I like about painting is that I don't, I don't need a religious system in order to enjoy it and I don't need to take lots of, lots of drugs to get my mind blown.